Hello everyone, I am Kelki Asalamu from the channel called Inkotam. In this video, we are going to see elements of buildings and their classifications. Building elements classification might be different as the classification base is changed. Regarding this, building elements might be classified first, based on the structural nature of elements, second, based on location of elements, third, based on the purpose of the elements. Regarding to the based on structural nature of elements, when classifying building elements according to their structural nature, a building contains structural and non-structural elements. So the structural elements of buildings are elements which are expected to be qualified enough to transfer the load exerted on them towards the successive structural element. The other one is non-structural elements of a building. The non-structural elements of a building are the elements which are not exposed to different loads from the other elements. That means non-structural elements of a building are required to be strong enough to resist their own self-load so as transfer to the next or the attached structural member. The common nature of structural elements in a building is that the fail of one element becomes the cause for the fail for the other, but the fail of non-structural elements will not affect other members in the building. Additionally, structural elements are mostly constructed earlier than the non-structural elements. The most common construction method is called framed structure, which follows colon, beam, and slab arrangement. The other concept deals with the load exposure issue is that the load expected to be transferred in a building are dead load, live load or superimposed load, wind load, and seismic load. So, the dead load which is a load exerted on a building due to the self-weight of the building and the fixed installations on it. This type of load on a building is nearly constant throughout the lifetime of the building, unless the part of the element or the fixed fixtures from the building is removed. To know the total dead load on a structure, it is very essential to know the unit mass of the materials used in the construction of the structure. Live load or superimposed load. Live load or superimposed load is a moving or variable load on a structure. Materials stored and peoples occupying the building can be the practical example for live load. The next one is wind load. This is significant in the case of high-rise buildings which is capable of creating an uplift pressure on the structure. The uplift pressure is occurred while the wind gives relief on the foundation from one side and creates additional load on the opposite side of the building. Seismic load. This is a load caused by an earthquake and has the potential to create a lateral pressure on buildings. In this case, buildings might be dislocated from their foundation and fell. We have seen this list of loads exerted on a building is because the structural elements of building are expected and required to resist all this live load, dead load, seismic load, and wind loads together. Second classification. Classification of building elements based on their location. Building elements can be differentiated based on their location as substructure and superstructure. The substructure of a building is located below the natural ground level, whereas the superstructure of building elements are found above the natural or the normal ground level. In most cases, lots of the building elements are presented in the superstructure part of the building, whereas the foundation is being in the substructure. 
Third, classification of building elements based on their function. This is very common listing way of building elements. As each building element serves for a specific purpose, listing building elements by their functionality addresses each component of the building separately. In this regard, we will see about eight components of building and wind up this session. Element 1. Foundation. Foundation is an element which is in a direct contact with the ground and load is transferred through. Its primary function is to make buildings rest on the ground without excessive and differential settlement. This criteria is fulfilled by increasing the surface area of the footing of the foundation to reduce the intensity of load coming from the building. Element 2. Beam Beams are the horizontal members in case of framed structure which is capable of collecting and transferring line load coming from roof trusses, walls, slabs, and stair landings. Element 3. Columns These are the vertical members that transmit load through compression. They accept load from the preceding structural element above and transfer it to the next structural element below. Element 4. Walls Walls are the vertical members of a building which their width is greater than their thickness minimum of 4 times. Walls are used to enclose space and divide space in the building. While dividing the space in a building, provision of privacy, security, protection from heat, cold, sun and rain are accomplished. In this regard, walls are required to be strong enough to resist the weather condition and thermal attack. Element 5. Floors Floors are the element which provide level surface with adequate strings to resist the imposed load from occupants. Some of the imposed loads on the building are user of the building, mainly humans, furniture, machines installed, partition walls, and the like. Element 6. Openings Openings in a building mainly address doors and windows. Doors are the openable barriers attached to the wall and those doors are the gateway between one room to the other and from corridor to the room. Windows Windows are the other openable elements attached to the walls and roofs. The primary function of windows is to give light and ventilation for a room. Additionally, windows increase the aesthetic value of buildings. Element 7. Vertical Axis Vertical axis is the movement of peoples and machines from one floor to the other. A vertical axis is required for buildings with more than one floor. The vertical accessing mechanism can be a ladder, stair, ramp, scalator, elevator and so on. For a building to select among those vertical accesses, the type of the building whether it is residential or commercial, the height, the cost of the element might be analyzed. Element 8. Roof Roof is the uppermost cover in the building. A building is safe from external weather such as rain, sun, and wind due to the existence of this element. Roofs are the elements exposed to rain, sun, and heat with a higher intensity comparatively than other building elements. In this regard, roofs have to be strong enough to resist the temperature variation so that they can last long. Dear viewers of this video, this was all I have prepared for you as an introduction to elements of buildings. In the next video, each building elements are going to be discussed in detail. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.